Welcome to St. Thomas Aquinas on our Patronal Feast Day. Today's second collection is for our sister parish in Haiti. We are fortunate to have Father Fresnel, the pastor of San Martin in De Lot, Haiti, with us this weekend to speak with us about the parish and school that this community helps support. The second collection will be taken up after communion. At the time of our offertory, our children are invited to bring their offering to one of the baskets in front of the altar. So that we might all worship with reverence for God and respect for one another, please take a moment now to check once again that your phone has been turned off. We love our children. So that we may maintain a safe environment, we ask that parents accompany their children when on church property. The intention for this Mass is for the founders and benefactors of this parish. <coughs> Our presider and deacon for this Mass are Archbishop Gregory John Hartmeyer and Deacons Mike Chernick and Geza Garabin. Please stand now and offer one another a happy feast day, and if you find any newcomers or visitors, be sure to give them a warm welcome. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. As we celebrate uh, the feast day of our patron saint, St. Thomas Aquinas, we are very blessed to welcome Archbishop uh, Gregory John Harmeyer among us to celebrate the Mass. Bishop, welcome Thank to St. Thomas Aquinas. Usually when the bishop comes, if it's not a confirmation, then there's a problem. <laughs> but there's no problem here. We are just here to celebrate the patronal feast of this parish, St. Thomas Aquinas. It's a perfect way to begin Catholic Schools Week with such, such a, a remarkable, intelligent uh, theologian as Thomas Aquinas uh, was and left us with a great number of theological and philosophical reflections. And so we owe a great deal to Thomas Aquinas, a Dominican friar. And so we are here today, I am here today to be with you, which is a joy for me, 
and to celebrate this Mass in honor of the patron of your parish. So as we begin to prepare ourselves to enter into the mystery of God's love in this Eucharist, to be open to his word as it is proclaimed, and to offer the Lord uh, our sins and asking him to take them and forgive them and grant us his mercy. Lord, have mercy. You teach us mercy and forgiveness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the wisdom of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory, glory to God in the highest. God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty, My dear children, St. Thomas Aquinas is the patron saint of this parish, who was not only a great teacher but a, a lifelong student. He wanted to know and understand God and to share what he had learned. I pray that you may also be filled with the desire to know the Lord. And so now go and hear the word of God. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. O God, who made St. Thomas Aquinas outstanding in his zeal for holiness and his study of sacred doctrine, grant us, we pray, that we may understand what he taught and imitate what he had accomplished. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please remain standing. seated. My dear friends, 
peace, and all good. I am very grateful to your pastor, Father Juan Ezera Aresa, the clergy, Father Dan Fleming, and the deacons and the staff at St. Thomas Aquinas Church for inviting me to celebrate this Mass on the feast day of the patron saint of your parish, St. Thomas Aquinas. It is always a joy for me to visit parishes. Some, so much of, of the life of a bishop is administration and with meeting after meeting. Having served as a pastor in different parishes myself, including St. Philip Benizi in Jonesboro and St. John Vianney in Lithia Springs, I always welcome opportunities to celebrate the Eucharist in parish churches because that's where the people of God are and I enjoy being among them. There was a Dominican and a Franciscan and a Jesuit who were in the same hospice and all were near death. One evening, the angel of death appeared before them and informed them that it was their time and that each could have one final request before accompanying them from this world. Well, the Dominican asked to gaze upon the face of his Savior. In an instant, the face of Christ appeared before him. He was satisfied and he felt that he could die now with no regrets. The Franciscan asked to touch the wounds on the hands and the feet of Jesus before he had died. Christ appeared and invited him, like Thomas, to examine his wounds. The dying friar touched Christ's hands and feet and wept with joy and peace and contentment. And finally, the angel of death asked the Jesuit for his final request. And without hesitation, the Jesuit replied, I'd like a second opinion. <laughs> now don't tell the Jesuits that I said that. Today, we all celebrate the feast of a truly great saint whose renown throughout all Christendom remained even to the very day. St. Thomas Aquinas was one of the greatest minds in the church. In the seminary, we had to learn about Thomas Aquinas about his studies, about his philosophy, about his theology. And he had some great insights. And if you want to get a little insight into Thomas Aquinas, then just go to your computer and Google Thomas Aquinas and his proofs for the existence of God. His proofs, there are five of them, Proofs for the, for the existence of God. And I think you'll be amazed at his logic and how he reasoned in his own mind and shared with us how he came to understand that God exists. That there's no other explanation for what we have experienced in our time on earth the time that we wonder about why we are, where did we come from, where are we going? An answer to a lot of the whys. And they're very simple understandings of how there must be a God. St. Thomas Aquinas, Google it, 
proofs for the existence of God. I think you'll enjoy it. It is a most appropriate day to begin to celebrate Catholic Schools Week today because Thomas was such a teacher, he was such a great mind, and he thought and taught and wrote about Jesus, about our relationship with God and God's relationship with us. A Dominican friar and a priest, St. Thomas Aquinas was remembered for his amazing treatises and works in theology and philosophy, as well as many beautiful Eucharistic hymns, such as one that's very familiar to us, the Tantumergo, that we sing at benediction during adoration, was written by Thomas Aquinas. While he was a tremendous scholar, he was a humble servant of the gospel. It is an extraordinary teacher who can hold his or her students spellbound. Spell spell and yet that is what Mark tells us that Jesus did as he began to teach in the synagogue on this certain day that we heard in today's gospel. The people's attention was fixed on him. Mark says, because this young rabbi, the carpenter from Nazareth, taught with authority. He did not repeat what the rabbis had been saying before him down through the histories. Rather, he spoke a message that was from his heart and that others could recognize as true. We have a saying that we use from time to time that talk is cheap. Perhaps some of those listening to Jesus in the synagogue that day began to think about that also. Perhaps the man with the unclean spirit who was there began to think about that as well. What do you want of us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? And in fact, he had. Come out of that man, he said to the demons. And they did. And once again, the people remarked about Jesus' authority. It's not just about authority, because authority can come with a position. But there has to be something about the person who is in authority that makes him most effective. And it might surprise you what that trait or characteristic is. He gives orders to unclean spirits and they obey him. The authority of Jesus rests in the fact that he is a person of authenticity. Authenticity. That's what makes a person with authority, effective, because he's authentic. He is who he is. He is who he say, says he is. He lives according to what he believes. He's authentic. He's genuine. And it is that example that enables us to believe him, because he believes in himself. And we can tell that he believes it by the way he lives his life. Some people readily criticize Pope Francis because he seems so different than the other popes in our lifetime. He is different. He's the Jesuit. <laughs> but he's not afraid to think out loud. And of course, we're not used to that. And journalists write down every word he says. And he's not saying it as truth or dogma or doctrine. He's simply saying what he's thinking. And then, of course, all of his minions have to retract everything he said or reword it so that it's more understandable and less uh, frustrating for people to, well, what is he saying? But you know about Francis, it's not about what he says, 
It's about what he does. It's about how he lives as a pope. His lifestyle is remarkable, sim simple, and his thoughts are authentic. They're genuine because they're from his heart. And he sees every one of us in our own state of life. And he sees people from all over the world that come to see him or he goes to see them. And he sees them as a person that deserves dignity, that de deserves to be respected as a human being. He doesn't put people in, in cubicles or in categories. He sees them as children of God. And they're walking at a different pace. They're walking slowly. And we, as priests, as bishops, are to walk with our people where they are. Some people are running. Some people are strolling. They're walking. Some people are lagging behind. And we, as a church, need to walk with them where they are. Because when they stop walking, then that's the problem. And they usually stop walking because they find themselves walking alone. But if they see the church interested in them, wanting to include them, seeing them as human beings made by God in the image and likeness of him, and if they see someone walking with them from the church, they will continue to walk. And that's what Francis does. Every country he goes to, and some of them are the most unlikely countries that anyone would visit, much less a pope. But he goes there because they are people of God. And he wants to be with them. He wants them to see him consider them important and to give them the respect and the dignity that they deserve. And that's an example for us. He lives a tremendously simplicity of life. He refused to live in the palace. He lives in a small room with the other members that work at the Vatican. And he stands in line and receives his food in the cafeteria just like everyone else. That's never been done before. He doesn't, consider himself, he doesn't consider himself any better than anyone else. And Thomas Aquinas, as a Dominican friar, had that same humility despite his brilliance. He didn't, he didn't flaunt it. He was deep in his thought about God and his existence and how God looks upon us and how we can relate to God and how he relates to us. In the first reading today from the book of Deuteronomy, the Israelites longed for a prophet who would speak God's word to them and lead them on the pathway of life. Through Moses, God makes this promise to them. He says, I will raise you for them, I will raise for them a prophet like you, for them from their own kin, from among themselves. And I will put my words into his mouth and he shall tell them all that I command. And so even from the Old Testament, thousands of years ago, they were expecting someone to enlighten them, someone to show them the way, someone to fulfill the prophecies of the Old Testament that a Messiah will come and will save us. And so the gospel shows that this promise was fulfilled in a supreme way in Jesus Christ, whose authority astonished the people assembled in the synagogue of Capernaum. You see, the, the people who were typically teaching in the synagogue, 
They were professionals. They were learned men. They spoke as they were taught. But it was like you were listening to a lecture instead of listening to someone talk about their own life experience and try to make an application that the people could take into their own lives. They were professional religious people. That wasn't the approach that Jesus took. And so there he is in the temple among all these learned rabbis. And Jesus, a young man, comes among them in the synagogue and begins to teach. In popular language, a prophet is often thought of as someone who can predict the future. But in our religious tradition, a prophet is a person who announces God's message and instructions for life in the present moment. You see, the prophets had a script and they read all the things that they were supposed to read as learned members of the scriptures. But Jesus comes in with a message unlike their own, and he announces God's message and instructions for life now in the present moment. I blessed you with the book of the Gospels after it was proclaimed for a reason. The Word of God is alive. It's alive. It's the Word of God. It's not history. It's the present moment. And every time that that gospel is proclaimed in the context of the Mass, it's alive. And it touches us in our heart at this present moment, even though it was written 2,000 years ago. It still has a meaning for us today. And even if we hear it every three years, which is what we do, it means something different to us every time we hear it because we're different. We're three years older than the last time we heard it. And a lot of things have happened in our life in those three years. But the message that Jesus has for us will relate to us and resonate with us because of this present moment in which we are living. That's why proclaiming the gospel particularly and reverencing it and recognizing for what it is, the living word of God, it has more meaning to us. We oftentimes say, you know, I pray to God all the time. I never hear a word back. Well, this is his word. And he's proclaiming it to you every Sunday. And there lies the answer to your prayers. If you listen, if you listen, and you can do this at home, you can begin to read the scriptures at home, especially the Gospels. And many times you will find in those readings, even though you've heard them time and time again, Something will strike you that has been on your heart when you read the gospel because it's the living word of God speaking to you, speaking to all of us. And God wanted the people to hear that day in the synagogue as, just, as demonstrated in the healing of the man who was possessed that Jesus had come to cast out whatever impedes life and prevents us from enjoying our dignity as sons and daughters of God. Jesus came to make us whole again. Why did the teaching of Jesus have such an impact? In what way was it different from the teaching of the scribes? The words of Jesus had the power to move people's hearts. They had the ring of truth about them because they came from personal experience. That's why Jesus came into the world the way he did. He could have come in as God, but he came in as God-man. He came in as the Word made flesh. The Word made flesh. 
he took on our human nature because he wanted to relate to us from his own personal experiences because he could relate better to the shepherds, to the farmers, to the fishermen, to anyone from his personal experience and it relates to the person who is listening to him. They had the ring of truth about them because they came from his personal experience. People listened to Jesus primarily because he was a living witness to the truth of God's love. He showed this love by the way he lived. People experienced God's mercy and compassion in his actions. Jesus does what he says. He reached out to the sick, to the less privileged, those who were neglected or excluded from society. In our day, the church is called to continue the prophetic ministry of Jesus, speaking and acting in truth, in his name, casting out the unclean spirits of war and injustice, of hatred and violence, and prejudice and alienation and so many others that continue to impede the fullness of life that God that it is God's desire for all his people and we are that church st. Thomas Aquinas the Archdiocese of Atlanta we are that church we who hear the gospel of Jesus today recognize in him the truth that must strive to be people of authenticity. We must be people of authenticity in whom our tongues agree with our hearts and our deeds agree with our words. How many times have you heard your parents say, do as I say, not as I do? Well, how authentic is that? Do you really believe in what you're saying to us if you're not able to do it in your own life? That's what young people are looking for today, is authenticity, genuineness. People who really believe what they say. Not what other people say, but what they have come to know as the truth. And they want to live that the best they can as an example, as a living gospel to other people. We read in Mark's gospel, whoever wishes to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you will be the slave of all. For the Son of Man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom to many. We are called to imitate Jesus' example. In the words of St. Francis of Assisi, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel and use words only if necessary. The way you can preach the gospel most loudly and most effectively is to live it, not to preach it to others, but to live it yourself. And others will notice that. They'll notice that in home, at the home, at your home. They will notice that at your place of work. They will notice that in the marketplace. Because you are living the gospel. You are living what you believe. And that will have an impact on other people who aren't there yet. And you can influence them by your own life. And it begins at home. Toward the end of his life, a Dominican friar secretly observed St. Thomas Aquinas praying in front of a painting of the crucifix. And he was surprised this friar who was looking in on Thomas. 
to hear a voice coming from the cross. And the voice of the Lord was saying, You have written well of me, Thomas. What reward do you want for your labors? And St. Thomas looked at that painting with the crucifix on it, and he responded immediately, Nothing. I want nothing except you, O Lord. Nothing except you, O Lord. That's Thomas Aquinas. Happy feast day, and may the Lord grant you his peace. Amen. Amen. Will the catechumens and the candidates please come forward? Was there something that you heard in the Gospel, in the book of Deuteronomy? in my homily that has given you an opportunity for deeper thought about what we heard today and what the Lord is speaking to you about, especially when it comes to authenticity and genuineness and listening to the Word as it truly is the Word of God. I think that will give you some food for thought. And so as you consider more deeply the words of today's scriptures, may you receive a spirit of understanding. We pray that the faith which has led you on this journey to baptism may be a faith that rests not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. And as you leave this place to ponder the power of the word of God, we have shared with you know of our eagerness to share with you the nourishment that can only be found in the body and the blood of the Lord. So go now in our peace. Let us now stand and profess what we believe. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, through God from through God, begotten not made, unconstitutional. For him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who is adored and the Son, who is adored and glorified, who 
He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us intercede for our own needs and the needs of all in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy One of God. Our response today is, God of wisdom and love, hear our prayer. God of wisdom and love, hear our prayer. That the church may teach the truth of God with an authority born of faithful witness and loving service, we pray. God, God of wisdom and love, hear our prayer. That world leaders may not seek exaltation, but listen instead to the words of the one true master, the Christ, and turn away from greed, vengeance, terror, and war, we pray. God of wisdom and love, hear our prayer. That those burdened by emotional anguish or mental illness may receive the care they need, the love they desire, and the healing they seek, we pray. God of wisdom and love, hear our prayer. That all members of this parish celebrating its patronal feast day may join with St. Thomas Aquinas in asking God for a mind to know him, a heart to seek him, wisdom to find him, conduct pleasing to him, faithful perseverance in waiting for him, and a hope of finally embracing him, we pray. God, of oh, hear our prayer. That students, families, faculty, staff, and friends of Catholic schools may work towards evangelization in addition to education that will build the kingdom of God, we pray. God, of that we may lift up with loving hearts the intention of this Mass for the founders and benefactors of this parish, we pray. God, of wisdom and love, hear our prayer. That with every unclean spirit cast out, the faithful departed may be led in the presence of the Holy One of God, we pray. God, of wisdom and love, hear our prayer. Father, we continue to pray for peace throughout the world, especially in those war-torn countries of, of Gaza, the, the Holy Land, the Ukraine, and other parts of the world. Comfort the victims of war, especially those who have been displaced, those who have lost loved ones. Lord, we beg you, please, bring peace to our world. We ask this as we pray to the Lord. Love, hear our prayer. In Christ your Son, O Lord, you impart to us a new teaching from one who speaks with authority. For Jesus is our only master and teacher. Help us to live humble lives, seeking your wisdom over the honors of the world. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that this, my sacrifice and yours, will be pleasing and acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonders to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joy, a joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, 
He took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate, the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church has spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Archbishop, our Auxiliary Bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, our own Thomas Aquinas, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. With you. Welcome. Peace, one. Thank you.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Be still and know that I am God. You are my chosen one to whom my love I give. My life is yours, in you I love. Be I came to set you free. Give me your cares and rest in me. Be At this time, the ushers will take up our second collection, which this week 
is for the support of the school and parish of Saint-Martin in Delat, Haiti. For those, for those taking the Eucharist to the homebound and sick, please come forward. Please take our Lord to those who cannot be with us at this time. Let them know that we are praying for them and looking forward to seeing them again with us. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you. that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. <coughs> First of all, on behalf of our beloved parish, Archbishop Armeyer, thank you very much for taking the time to celebrate with us our patron saint today. We also have today with us a Father Fresnel. Father Fresnel is from our sister parish in Haiti, from uh, St. Martin, and he's here with a very important message for all of us. And um, one of the members of the Haiti committee, Karen Mackie Master, is here to translate uh, Father's message for all of us. So please listen carefully. Bishop Hatmayer, très cher fidèle de Saint Thomas, je suis Père Fristnel Zansal, curé de la paroisse Saint Martin de Tours de Delat, Haïti. Most Reverend Archbishop Hartmeyer, Reverend Father Juan, Reverend Father Dan, and all the clergy and parishioners of St. Thomas Aquinas, my name is Jean-Charles Frisnel. I am the pastor of your sister parish, St. Martin de Tours, in the Lat Haiti. Ma joie est ici grande car je me retrouve par devant vous aujourd'hui, non seulement pour vous saluer religieusement, vous souhaiter mes vœux, les meilleurs pour ce nouvel an, mais aussi pour vous parler de l'école presbytérale Saint-Martin de Delat. My heart is full of joy today because I can finally be with you to personally greet you and thank you and wish you a happy new year. And also to tell you about the schools of Saint-Martin in Delat. En effet, 
depuis 25 ans environ, avec vos moyens financiers, vous avez permis aux élèves de Delat de recevoir le pain de l'instruction. Aujourd'hui encore, malgré les multiples difficultés auxquelles vous êtes confrontés depuis l'arrivée du COVID, vous continuez à le faire en aidant 847 élèves à aller à l'école. For approximately 25 years, thanks to your financial support, the students in the LAT have been provided the opportunity to attend school. This year, despite the health issues that we are enduring ever since COVID-19, and despite the political upheaval in the country, your continued involvement has allowed 847 students to attend school. Adelat, laissez-moi vous dire que la situation économique des gens est très lamentable pour ne pas dire très difficile. Cependant, grâce à votre générosité, les élèves que vous avez soutenus, certains d'entre eux, sont devenus infirmières, ingénieurs, électriciens, plombiers, etc. There is a lot of misery in the lot as life is difficult for the parishioners. But thanks to your generosity, the students that you've helped have graduated with trade skills. Some are electricians, plumbers, masons, Others have been able to pursue a higher education to become nurses or even an agronomist. Pour cela, les parents, les élèves, les professeurs et les fidèles de Delat se servent de ma voix pour adresser un remerciement de grandeur à votre regard, notamment au clergé de la paroisse Saint-Thomas d'Aquin, le révérend père Juan le révérend père Dan, le révérend père Bernie, pour tout ce qu'il représente pour Delat. The parents, students, teachers of the lab have told me to speak in their name in thanking you from the bottom of their hearts. Thank you to Father Juan, Father Dan, Father Bernie, and all the parishioners for your support and for continuing to represent all of us in St. Thomas Aquinas, to represent us to your parishioners in the name of the Lot, your sister parish in Haiti. Au fidèle de Saint Thomas, pour leur générosité et aussi leur attachement à Delat. Et enfin, à ce comité qui avait l'habitude de se rendre à Delat, Haïti, Dr. Laurie, Joe, Suzanne, Karine, Jackie, Bridget, pour leur amour de toujours pour Delat. Again, thank you to all of you, brothers and sisters of St. Thomas Aquinas, for your generosity and for your, your devo devotion, I'm sorry, to the Lat and to the parishioners of the Lat and especially to the children of the Lat. And finally, I want to thank the Haiti Committee, including Dr. Laurie, Joe, Karine, and so on, so many people that used to come to visit us in Haiti. Um, and thank you for your, all for your love of the Lat, and again, especially for the children. De Lat vous aime tellement qu'il prie pour vous et qu'il demande à Dieu de vous bénir abondamment. The people of the Lat love you so very much that they pray for you every day and ask God to bless you abundantly and to keep you safe. The students of the LAT have created a thank you card for all of St. Thomas Aquinas 
that reads Parish, Parish, I'm sorry, Saint Martin de Tour de Delat, the Presbytery School of Saint Martin de Tour de Delat thanks you for your financial support toward us. For without it, we couldn't stay alive. Thanks, thanks, thanks ever so much. We continue to raise you in our prayers. I would now like to bless you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I wish you the best. Thank you. So. Father Friesnell is here to thank our community for our love and support, and I'm here to tell you, please let's keep going this work of the Lord as we continue to support this mission work in St. Martin in Haiti. Our second collection today was for this particular ministry, and if you were unable to donate to that second collection today, you also may bring your donations throughout this week or in the following weekends, and we will be more and happy to make sure that your donations to this particular ministry ends up helping the 847 students that are able to go to school because of your love and generosity here at St. Thomas Aquinas. A few more um, announcements this weekend. This week is Catholic School Week. Do we have any Catholic school children or teachers here in our parish this morning at Mass? We would like you to stand so that we can recognize you and pray for you. Anyone from Catholic school? Deacon, great, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, the small ones, stand up high. God bless you guys. <laughs> Adoration is now um, happening also, apart from every um, day after our daily mass, Every Wednesday at noon from 7 to 8 p.m. in the chapel, everyone is welcome to participate. This coming Friday is first Friday. We have our healing mass at noon. Next weekend, at all masses, we will conduct in the Archbishop's annual appeal in pew process. And we will also hear the message of our Archbishop for the appeal this year. I ask you to please play, uh, take time this week to pray and discern your support of this campaign, and as always, I thank you very much for your love and generosity to our parish and our archdiocese. And last but not least, and Archbishop is going to love this, we have, in honor of our patron saint, donuts and coffee in the gathering area for everyone. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you kindly and grant you his peace. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
my pleasure.